I, I better give you a little bit. I, I am releasing a video, so I don't want to give away too much of my thoughts, but I'm actually doing a convict's thoughts in regards to the crime scene itself. What I, as a criminal, walking this crime scene on the outside and on the inside of the house would be specifically looking for, based off of my experience committing crimes, not only of planning, but then the break-in and the commission of the crime and then the exit of the crime. So I'm going to actually do, that's my next series of videos. I believe, and the reason why I believe it's so sealed, and this is just my opinion. It's just a thought. They have a weapon. They found a weapon. I guarantee you, in this very case, the way they were investigating that living room just outside of Xana and Ethan's room, they found a weapon laying right there. A weapon that was used in an attack was found in that living room. It may not be the K-Bar knife that everybody's thinking that they're looking for or searching for due to the sheath. But there's a weapon that's laid right there that was used against one of the victims, whether it be a golf club, whether it be something from the kitchen, because they went in and tore up that kitchen. And there's only two reasons why they would tear up that kitchen. Something was used from that kitchen in the commission of the crime because there's not going to be blood seeping from upstairs into that kitchen. Like people have said, it's coming down, blah, blah, blah. Something was used from inside that kitchen as a part of the commission of the crime. Or two, the place was ransacked, meaning whoever committed this crime was in the house not only looking for something, but then it led them to taking the life of these people. They were looking for something, meaning the cupboards were all open to the kitchen and ransacked looking for something, and other drawers within the living room areas, because you got to remember, too, they were investigating the outside windows of the downstairs spare bedroom nobody lived in. They were taking prints and fully doing an investigation of that window. And they did an investigation of the back window of the kitchen. If they knew he walked in the slider and then walked back out of the slider to leave, those windows wouldn't be a part of their and you need to look at it. Look at the pictures. There's literally five or six of them peeling fingerprints or something off of those windows. So it should give you some clues into did the guy really come in the back door? Was that his first entrance or was he looking for a different way in and that became his entrance? What was moved around in the kitchen and in the living room? And this is coming from someone that knows what to look for within a crime scene because I've been in them so much. I know where you leave things or what happens to disturb things. And if this crime is what we're led to believe, Hunter Johnson was called over to push open a bedroom door to find Ethan and Zana in a bedroom. If that were the case, he had to have walked through that main living room right in front of their bedroom. And you're telling me there's no blood splatter on that from the upstairs to the downstairs and moving around? You don't have any blood that would have caught his eye that said, oh, shit, this is – there's blood everywhere right here. There's blood right here. Uh, that's why I don't believe that Ethan – Ethan's body was blocked in the door. I don't believe Hunter Johnson tried to push open the door and found him. I believe there's a weapon or something very prominent to this case that was found in that living room. Right there in the middle of that living room. Whether it be a broken lamp, a golf club, whatever it might be, it's in that living room. And they have an exhibit of that. And it's going to come into play somehow.
And it's not going to be a weapon that came from outside, though. Yeah, and uh, they did take Ethan's golf clubs as evidence. They slapped an evidence sticker on his golf bag and took it as evidence. That was hard to see, but it was mainly talking about two people upstairs, right? Let me bring it back. We have a lot of comments. Too. All right. Because I heard early on as well, you know, I heard that there was, um, and this is rumor, um, that Dylan supposedly heard people rummaging around upstairs and that they were looking for something. It sounded like they were looking for something. So, um, and that, you know, once they found the bodies the next day that you could see that the house had been rummaged through, like they were searching for, and I think this is where the drug, can I say drug? Well, I already did, but um, this is where the drug theory came in is because they speculated that they were looking for the drugs or they were looking for money. Um, so I believe this is where... Um, all that ties in is because of the noise that she heard. And when she heard them rummaging around upstairs, that's where she said, hey, you need to shut the up. I'm trying to sleep. And that was another, that was also in a Reddit post, I think I read it at, where she supposedly yelled upstairs, hey, you need to shut the F up. I'm trying to sleep. Have you heard of any of that? Okay, so where I've heard of it from was the other night in a live stream, AR did an entire segment on it. It would be kind of fascinating to pull up. I just don't know the timestamp, but he basically said he broke down why he believed that the um, kitchen had been ransacked, how mm -hmm. all the drawers had been pulled out. It looks like yeah. some, something had been pulled out of the sink or something. So it, he had said it looked like it had been ransacked. And then he also talked about well, if there's visible blood stains in the kitchen, then that means that something probably happened in the kitchen. Others have speculated it could have been something coming from upstairs, but he said it wouldn't, you know, he, he broke it down. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I ha that's where else I've heard it. It was my point. So. I, think, I think also, since you're talking about the kitchen, you know, um, one of the pictures had like, the cabinet by the refrigerator had some reddish substance going down it. And it was early on where they were speculating that that might have been blood, you know. And I think that's where that all ties in together, is mm -hmm. what you're talking about, is the cabinet right there by the refrigerator. When they took a picture from the outside, you could see kind of a brownish substance going down the cabinet. Um, I had heard later on that that was chemicals that they used to um, to put on the cabinets, but you just never know. It could have been could have been blood, you know. Well, I've seen what I thought was blood spatter in a couple pictures, but um, yeah, it'll, it'll be really interesting to see. We have we have a in that we'll go back to the tour. Um, afterwards too because when i show you those mixing pictures one thing i it just made me think of this when you were talking is they have some interesting photographs in there of what it would look like with the lights off so you can see like exactly how the room looks with the good vibe sign and exactly how much light is being let through yeah i i just want to air that was a very powerful little segment you just gave and i saw an immediate comment right as you started talking about that that i just wanted to bring up because it seems to come up every time we get deep into the early details and accounts of what happened at the 1122 king road home and it was um a comment about the isrbg and so that's the idaho slice roast beef um and hold on let me see if i can go back up to it real quick i just want to read it to you. Hold on. 
There it is. It says the I the ISRBG guy said a female came in at him with a knife. And I'm not trying to put validity into the ISRGB, but however, I mean, if that's what we're doing now, if we're just putting value into people who have sources and taking their sources at face value, then why not talk about some of these things? Now, the reason I didn't put a lot of validity into the ISRBG is because they were active during the Madeline McCain case, and they're basically like macabre satire. So I just assumed that that it was macabre satire, but that's an interesting comment. And then AR, when you talk about weapons, I always say the two weapons that come to my mind first that would have been involved um, would be a stun gun or maybe like or form. I'm not, I'm just speculating here, just saying, you know, in my opinion, those would be two things that might be used. And um, Jeff also said something that there were two comments I want to just push back to you, AR, and have you answer. Jeff said in the comments, he goes, where were the accounts of the kitchen had been ransacked? And then the other thing I'd like you to answer is you said something about blood dripping from the kitchen and it could not have been from the second floor. It should have happened in the kitchen. I don't know if I heard you correctly because I don't remember the blood. I mean, there there's definitely pictures where I know that I've seen what I think is blood spatter, but I just didn't know what you were referencing. And I'll just turn it back. To you. All right. Uh, let, let me answer Jeff H. How do we know the kitchen was torn apart? Okay. For one, everything out of the sink was removed out of the sink and placed onto the actual table. Two, you see in the outside pictures the people working the crime scene in the kitchen with the cabinets all open. They're looking at the outside of the cabinets. They're looking at the ceiling. And many people have come back and said, well, that's a blood splatter because there's blood that came from the upstairs bedroom down. And, you know, when you lay the floor plans out, that just doesn't work. It doesn't fit. Um, based on the fact if Maddie and, and, and Kaylee were both found in Maddie's room, that doesn't it doesn't work because the kitchen literally kind of only comes to where the stairwell goes up and Maddie's bedroom is on the other side of that stairwell. So it doesn't work. Um, but the forensics team was working very diligently in that kitchen. They were in there for a long period of time. Then you also see the photographs from outside of the upstairs living room with the hazmat workers working outside of the bedroom in the living room, right with the good vibes sign, the second good vibes sign right behind them, meaning they were in the living room right outside the hallway that led to Santa's uh, bedroom. Yeah, I've, I've studied these pictures. I know I haven't got out there and I haven't talked about a lot of this. I but. didn't get a clue in this video too. If you guys miss him, I give a whole thing on him. All right, here we go. And VPN. I want to bring up this article from the Medium and I'm going to read from this article, and then we're going to tie it back to a very recent soundbite posted on Bubbly Waters' channel. So this article is titled, Idaho 4 Murder Solved by 4chan Users, a Deep Dive. And we're not going to read the entire article. I'm mainly going to focus on 4chan, the FBI, and something called weaponized autism. The author of this piece is a professional blogger, and this is, as far as I can tell, her only post on the Idaho 4. It was posted before the rest affidavit, and so that's what makes it even more fascinating. I'm sure that you've heard the criminal psychologist propose that a killer will return to the crime scene. Well, in the digital age, a thread on an anonymous forum about your crime is the new version of that. And then the author shows us a few of the 4chan posts and writes, these are thread on an anonymous forum about your crime is the new version of that. Okay, hey, 12, I just wanted to bring, I just want to bring us back on stage. So you said you hadn't seen some of the 4chan posts. Now these are very graphic. So I have seen this one. Okay, so I just didn't know. Um, all right, we're going to take that off the screen then. And then the author shows us a few of the 4chan posts and writes, 
These are messages that would eventually give the detectives the name of the suspect. Not only did the poster know the details of the crime scene that only the police would know, but he also stated that he was hiding in Pennsylvania where he was arrested. And now I'm just going to jump around here and we're going to talk about the weaponized autism. Weaponized autism is an expression referring to the impressive capabilities of socially awkward, tech-savvy internet users typically associated with those who frequent the image boards like 4chan. Don't forget, a 4chan autistic cracked the case. How? There was body cam footage that the cops released from the night of the murders. The footage was taken at almost the same time as the slayings occurred. And at the distance, a white car near the house was noticed. And the cops um, were at the same time harassing some kids for booze and writing $500 tickets. Someone on the internet, not the cops, said, hey, what's the deal with that white car? Then later, a chick at a gas station nearby had a video of it speeding away. Okay, and this is where things get considerably interesting. So the alleged killer, Brian Kohlberger, was found because his phone was hooked to a Bluetooth in the white Elantra at a Highway, ga highway 6 gas station. His phone just happened to be on 4chan at the time because he was posting horrific details about the crime on a thread about the murders. He connected through public Wi-Fi because your phone will all- Okay, I'm going to pause this right here because every I just want to say the live stream, everything we're hearing right now, this is like the only place I've really ever heard it except for the TikTok viral TikTok star that comes on after this. So I yeah, just I've read this. I've read this before. You have? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes, I have. All right. So I guess two of us have heard it before. Yeah, I've read this before. Thank you for validating 12. <laughs> you're right. welcome. <laughs> Always search for connections if your Wi-Fi feature is turned on. And cell tower networks, it's near. It does this to constantly know its location. So whatever you so whenever you need a cell tower, you have one. And whenever you want to use Google Maps or whatever, it doesn't take five minutes for your phone to jack into the um, correct GPS network. Okay, so this is one of the lines I really want to focus on. This means that they found the poster after he kept jumping VPNs while posting on the 4chan Idaho slasher thread. The author goes on to say that the FBI most likely owns the 4chan servers, and at the very least, everything posted on there is monitored by the feds and has been for at least um, the last decade or so. So, if the FBI owns these 4chan servers, well... Just really quickly on VPNs, VPNs typically can protect your anonymity online. However, there are backdoor ways to figure out who you are uh, via Wi-Fi and your search history through your ISO provider. Okay, and now I'm going to pull up a soundbite from Bubbly Waters channel that was recently posted. This soundbite comes from a TikTok personality who has about 100,000 followers, millions and millions of views. She doesn't typically post, or she doesn't post at all about the Idaho Four. She's typically music and um, politics, but that's what makes this clip particularly interesting. It went viral. She was told to take it down. Let's just hear in her own words. Um, that the posts that were speculated, um, that they were speculating that Brian had potentially posted on 4chan Reddit, that that in fact is confirmed that it was him doing that, like talking about the murders and stuff like that. And giving out information of how in fact the um, suspect, Brian K, how he was in fact arrested, how that information got to police. Because so many tips were coming into the police, um, this one ended up being a pretty reliable source in that they gave information that nobody could possibly know except them. And I have never even made a, one video about the Idaho murders. I was pretty content in watching other people's TikToks, just getting like facts and speculation from other creators. So anyway, I really don't care who thought it was real or fake or not. It's just, I fell into the live. I thought it was important information for other people to know and I released it. So yeah, crazy stuff. Took him down. That's, that's fine, no problem. I'll take him down. So that was a super interesting soundbite and I'd love to hear your comments below. So with that, <laughs> this actually, this was such an interesting video and I had to stop making these videos because somebody yelled at me for making videos in my car. But um, this was such an interesting <laughs> video. I like, I, this is back when I was making, uh, anyway, I tied in 
a motive theory at the end of this that has to do with Kylie Jenner, but I don't want to bore you guys with it. All right, let's take this down. So anyway, that was kind of my, my segment on 4chan I wanted to bring up. Um, I do remember the Idaho slasher. I do. And that's when it led into the inside looking. Those two were simultaneous. I didn't know they were simultaneous. That's interesting. Hmm? I didn't know they were simultaneous. That's interesting. I'll have to look into that a little bit. Yes. But um, the Idaho slasher was was very, very out there in the very beginning like that. He was posting that kind of stuff. I do remember reading that. The Idaho slasher 